Have you ever wondered what would happen if you started removing pins from your CPU? Yeah, well, me neither until about like five minutes before this video, and then I had that weird thought. So in today's video, we're going to take a demolition time to some CPUs and see exactly what happens when we plug these suckers in after removing some pins. Now, not only are we going to just do CPUs, though, we're going to do some other things, too. We've got some RAM sticks. We're going to, you know, make sure that they're missing some pins as well. And graphics cards. But before we get too far into it, we're not actually going to be tearing off pins. We're going to be simulating tearing off pins. And you're going, but Jay, how do you simulate tearing off pins? And that's with some good old scotch tape. Because as much as I like to tear apart a perfectly good CPU, uh... This channel is very um, PCMR friendly, so we're going to uh, not have anything that would not be appropriate for computer enthusiasts. So, more likely we're actually going to do something like this. Basically, we're going to use we're going to use scotch tape to tape off certain parts of the CPU, so that way, obviously, your pins can't make contact with the CPU, and then we're going to put it in the computer and see what happens. Now. We have a couple parts here. We're going to do that for some RAM. I think the RAM will probably not work regardless. For the graphics card, I think the PCIe lanes will probably get limited, depending on where we put it. And I am really interested to see what happens with the CPU. Now, obviously, there are people that have had, like, pins break off of a perfectly good AMD processor, and they have got it working, sometimes with missing only a channel of RAM or something like that. So I definitely think that it will be possible. My only issue is... There's going to be a lot of difficulty with the CPU because that is not going to work. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got the 16 gigs of RAM set up. Um, and I think we're going to start off with the RAM. So what I'm planning on doing is just taking the RAM module and marking off bits and pieces until it either gives me a wonderful little warning. Um, my hypothesis is that the RAM pins on here are pretty sensitive. These are not designed to have multiple, I guess kinds of RAM fit in here, different sizes, whereas the PCIe slots are specifically designed to be interchangeable, so you can have a 1X and like a 16X slot. So I think this will not, and actually I'm going to use the RAM that's already in here, but I think that the RAM itself is going to take very few. I'm going to try doing a very small slice first of the, uh, the, the connectors, and then we'll go from there. Let's turn this off and uh, get started. Okay, so the last two pins on one side of the RAM stick are completely covered up by tape. Now I'm interested to see exactly what's going to happen when we put this in the computer. And honestly, it's really a luck of the draw. Um, these could be grounding pins, which actually I can look and tell you. They definitely are not grounding pins. Then um, it will be interesting to see what happens. I think these might be part of the error correcting. We might lose ECC memory support. We'll find out. This is going to boot. Now I'm also interested to see what it's going to boot into, because we'll check the BIOS from there. So interestingly enough, it's booting. So, and we're already into the, and it's registering all 64 gigs of RAM in here, which is interesting enough. So the good news is the, looks like the tape 100% was there. Um, so it stayed on, perfect. Nothing really changed. It looks like those first two pins didn't actually change anything. Um, I will be very interested to see what happens if I put it dead center and specifically try to hit a data pin. So this is putting the tape right in the center of two, I guess one of the RAM modules, one of the da two data pins for the RAM modules. Um, so I'll be very interested to see what happens here. Oh yeah. The BIOS is already hung. I, uh... I don't think we're getting to the BIOS. So, point of the story is, there's a couple options that the those two pins on the end could be. But the pins that whatever I've covered are prohibiting the system from even posting, let alone giving a BIOS warning beep. So, I think that the RAM likely, those two pins were pretty important. And as I said, I, I aimed for two important data pins. So, yeah. So, point of the story is, well... Obviously, the RAM has lots of different pins on them, and I would hope by design the ones on the edge that are most likely to get clipped or whatever are a little bit more redundant or a little bit less important than the ones in the very center. Obviously, the ones in the very center are probably the safest, and so they'll probably be used for passing important information. 
That's why the system is not booting up at all. And so I think it's going to be very interesting going forward when we try like the PCIe lands and stuff because obviously PCIe is designed to obviously have more adaptability, more different kind of cards, etc. And just to show you real quick, this thing is hot too. What the heck? Are the other RAM modules hot? No! Okay. That might be a bad sign, actually. Hopefully we didn't cook it. Um, but I put it right here. I don't know if you can see it on the tip of my finger or not. But, um, yeah, this thing is hot. Okay. So that might actually mean this RAM might be cooked. Um, but let me get this off real quick. I'll be interested to see if it boots now, though. If I cooked the RAM module or not. I'm going to be interested to see what happens when we get the CPU, though. And it looks like we've already moved past that stage in the BIOS, so I think we're going to boot fine. But it looks like, as I predicted, those two pins in the portent, or those two pins in the center of the RAM were important. What happens when you move pins in the middle of your RAM stick? Well, you're going to have a fun time. If you move, remove them from the edges, like you drop it, you might be kind of lucky. But if you get like your dog biting and chewing on your RAM, you're, you're going to have a, a rough time. So next up, we have a graphics card. And basically, the main connector on the graphics card is, of course going to be passing most of the data. There is some power delivery in here, but also keep in mind that most of the power delivery for like the larger cards, well, yes, like the lower end basic entry level cards do not have this. Um, this is like the 12 pin or the uh, six pin in this case, power connector, and it says like 12 volts coming in through it, five volts, etc. So one of the interesting things is this is designed to be a little bit more adaptable than most connectors because the full size PCIe slot can accommodate all different sizes. It's basically a one size kind of fits all. Now, assuming, you know, some motherboard manufacturers make them smaller because, well, they don't want to make a card that's super large um, or don't want to have all these large PCIe lanes across them. So what, what, what some people have done online is they've actually modified the graphics card to run in these super small slots. So, for example, there are some mods that you can do that actually where you cut this like this connector, and then you only have it running like a super small slot. And usually that's for people that are just using it as a display because you end up getting bottlenecked by the amount of data transfer that you can get from these, if you were to shrink this connector, shorten this connector. That's why these connectors are usually as large as possible, so that way they can get as much data transfer as possible. A couple of things I want to try here. First off, we know that this first connector is required regardless of the PCIe um card every single pcie card has this and just by you know rather assumption i would assume that that first part is probably including the most important parts or without them the card probably won't post at all with so i think it's best that we start with the you know some of the farther end connector stuff that would normally be cut off by like a pcie you know malfunction or maybe just running at half speed etc or half you know 8x etc so i think trying with the 8x first will be interesting and then probably trying with the actual pcie i think 1x part covered up as well will also be interesting like for example this 1050 ti here has um every other connector it's missing a few it's not grounded or it's not taking advantage of all the different pins so it's probably just taking advantage of the data pins and then as you see as you get closer to the 1x slot um, you can see which pins are more important and probably required. So it's not taking advantage of all the pins. It's probably using 8x worth of bandwidth. So let's try this out with, of course, only a little bit of the bandwidth. So, you know, interestingly enough, I probably should plug in the freaking HDMI cable, shouldn't I? That'd probably be important. Um, I, I know it's going to boot into Windows just fine. So I'm going to go see if I can dig around the BIOS and see what mode it's running in. Does your uh, computer make this sound? I bet not. Yeah, so it looks like it's running... In 16x, at least from what I can tell here, this is a really poor BIOS. This is at running at Gen 3 with X16. So tape remained on there the whole time. Let's put this, matching it to the important pins here. And I think sadly they made the important pins very difficult to that's what this little plastic thing is here is to prevent the, the front pins here from getting messed up but we're going to purposely do that mess those front pins up i don't think this is going to boot now since we're messing with the um the important communication lanes and it looks like it is 
So we've got graphics out of it, even though the front pins are messed up, and it looks like we went straight to Windows. Okay, let's try some other pins. Let's put some more tape on there. I think this will be good enough. Nice long piece. Nice long slice of tape, guys. Oh, yeah. Perfect. I think I'm just going to cover up the entire first part of the connector here. So that's some tape right there. And that's got the, we still got the stuff on the back. And now we got the stuff on the front. I think this is not going to turn on. But that's just my personal preference. Take your guesses below. Will this turn on? Let's find out. That's called the UF up. Um, if you ever hear that sound, at least here, that know that means you usually effed up. Which it's nice to hear that we've disabled the graphics card to the point where it's not uh, it's not happening. So it looks like those front connectors uh, are most important on your graphics card. If you lose the other connectors, uh, anything you know, these front are the most important. And then if you lose back here, you still will obviously lose some of the speed and some of the bandwidth. Um, that you'd get from you know full use of your graphics card, but I still think you'd be able to get it working somehow. So I think that aside, graphics cards just keep the the tip safe, guys. Just just that's all you have to worry about. Don't worry about the rest. Just just keep the tip of the graphics card safe. Now it's time for the grand finale, and the grand finale is exactly what you expect. We're gonna take the CPU and we're gonna give it a nice little uh, surprise. I think the best way to do this, though, however is to start off on the the edges you know you don't want to you don't want to skip all the steps you have to go through all the different bases here guys you have to go through and start you know on the edge you know you, you don't you don't you don't get a little frisky until until you've you know experimented a bit and so we go through and we get like you know the edge here and then we go through and keep moving it forward until we have a cpu that doesn't work so I'm going to be interested to see what features actually don't work on this CPU. And I don't think I'm even going to try with the cooler on this. Like, you know, coolers are for, for, uh, I gotta be careful with what I say here. Cause this is all like sarcasm. Coolers are for losers. There you go. Cause, the, cause, and I say losers cause in the last video I didn't spell losers right. And like 50 people commented I can't spell right. I know guys, I got two brain cells. Why else would I think I'd be doing this crap? Let's try it now. Does this boot? I don't think it's going to boot on the first try. I really don't. I think even with the tape on the very corner, it's not happening. If it boots, I'm going to be very impressed with a, missing a corner. It, just, it boots without the corner of the CPU. So what I find very interesting is a lot of times in the industry, when we have a CPU and we're done testing it, you know, you get like the experimental versions of a CPU. At the end of the time, you'll trim or cut the CPU on the edge. But in reality, this proves that that doesn't really do anything. Obviously, like, I'm sure there is something wrong here. I'm sure, like, the ECC memory mode or something like that is messed up. But I guess what I'm saying is the CPU still works. And I guess that's kind of what this proves is if you trim the edge, even with the, you know, by putting it in the motherboard and with the edge trimmed, technicality, you have tape over it, but still edge clipped, it still can be used. So it kind of defeats the purpose of making sure that the review samples or the experimental samples don't get into the wrong hands. So I find that very interesting. One thing I do notice though, is it's extreme. Like I notice a delay on the seat on the uh, BIOS, like the bio, I wonder, I'm going to boot into windows though. I want to see what happens, you know, fully document this. It's a little laggy in the BIOS. I don't know if you saw how like the screen was, it was a lot slower. So I'm going to be interested to see. And obviously the fan was at full volume the entire time. I think it's hung up. So at least on the surface, it looks like the CPU. While having some problems, I think it definitely be interesting to do a whole kind of case study, a little bit of research on what actually happens when you... It looks like that died. It looked like it got hung up. Um, but just like seeing what happens with the clip CPU edges, seeing what actually works and what actually doesn't, just from you know going through and testing a bunch of different CPUs. That'd be an interesting study to do and uh, something I might actually pursue later on this year. So we'll see what happens. Um, but thank you guys very much for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful day and uh, check out the other videos. This is more of a educational side of things. Um, but we'll go back to looking at some whack ads in the next video. So thank you guys very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.